Hi, welcome to episode three with the wonderful Melinda McDougall, who's a medical herbalist. And we have done two wonderful episodes so far on menopause, the herbs that we can use, um, and how we kind of navigate our way through this kind of um, bumpy ride. Or maybe not, because we're not putting that into people's minds, are we? We're, we're putting that positive vibe that this is absolutely going to be fine. Um, so what we're doing on episode three is to answer some common questions that we've been getting from both of our clients and lots of friends and people that we know. And hopefully we can answer those um, or at least most of those questions. So the first one is a question that a lot of people don't want to talk about. They don't want to mention it. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. So can you help with herbs, um, vaginal dryness? and low libido, which a lot of my clients are suffering from. And it is, it's something that creeps up, isn't it, Melinda? You know, it, and yeah. people kind of they think they can live with it. And then all of a sudden the pain, I've had so many clients say the pain is unbelievable. And so bef before it gets to that point, what can somebody do? Right. Well, it's good to be back here on the third episode of this wonderful podcast. I'm so enjoying our conversation about all of these things. Um, but yeah, vaginal dryness can be really um, annoying and quite debilitating. It can really ruin your sex life as well. Mm. Um, one of the things I've found that really helps brilliantly is um, a supplement that you can easily get hold of that's called sea buckthorn oil. So C as in S-E-A, sea buckthorn oil. Um, and that is um, a, a beautiful kind of orange berry plant that grow, actually grows up in Scotland. Oh, wow. And um, the oil from it is just so moisturizing. And you just, you can buy it um, online, uh, you know, that lots of people sell it. A really good brand actually is Lambert's. Um, and uh, it just comes in a little capsule, oil-filled capsule. And uh, honestly, I've so many women have, have really, loved, you know, seen a very quick result from taking okay. that. Um, so you actually a, place yeah. it inside like a pen? No, no, oral, you, take, oh, it you take it orally. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, okay. take it orally. All and right. it's just a really moisturizing, beautiful oil um that's you know great for your whole body in menopause really. i was gonna say so is yeah. it good for the, great for the skin and your hair yes. and everything as yes well? it's really lovely really really good so you know because sometimes we off can... the shelves melinda you know that. <laughs> <laughs> we're all gonna go and buy some <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just you know because in menopause we can sometimes feel a bit dry uh you know generally so yeah. um so that's a really good one and there's also another um herb which is an ayurvedic herb from india that is called shatavari mm -hmm. and that is a very moisturizing um female tonic herb yeah. um and actually it's got another name uh which is she who has a hundred husbands oh. because <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd like that one today. <laughs> Bring it, it on, let's go and buy some. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> because it, it also helps with your libido as well. Um, and, you know, in the last episode, you actually really briefly mentioned maca root. Yes which is an adaptogen as well. Um, but, you know, that's really good for hormone balance in, in menopause. Um, and you can buy it as a capsule or a powder to put in your smoothies. Um, but it's, uh, it's very good for your libido as well. Um, but there are also kind of herbal pessaries that you can buy to insert vaginally um, that contain things, you know, like fennel and calendula. Um, which are very sort of um, healing and moisturizing to the vaginal tissues. Mm -hmm. And there's some really great herbal lubricants out there as well mm -hmm. um, that can, you know, just help with your sex life as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's a lot you can do around vaginal dryness. It's not a death sentence. It's not forever. Yeah, because people think that they think this is it forever. Yeah. So does it, so you use the herbs and then will that naturally get better anyway as you go through the menopause or does it stay like that? 
Um, it, can, it sort of varies from, from woman to woman. Um, you know, obviously some women have much more severe symptoms than others. Um, you know, but there's a lot you can do just to kind of help stay lubricated and yeah. um, moisten your vaginal tissues. Yeah. What about um, aloe vera just from the plant and things like that? Can you use that or is that not yeah, suitable? Yeah. Um, I think... I think maybe approach with caution and, okay. and, you know, do a little test on yourself before you go in all guns blazing. <laughs> um, but certainly the, the gel that is inside the aloe vera plant that you kind of scrape out, the clear yes. gel, yes. Um, that is very moisturizing. Although I do find that that has a, a, a bit of an awful yellow stain to, you know, when it dries. Okay. So you don't wear any white underwear if you're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the tip of the day. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what about, so these, these herbs that you're talking about, so they're going to help with libido too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cause I mean, that's another really, you know, that's a constant thing that I hear um, because also as we spoke about in the last episode, God, when you're feeling so run down and low energy mm -hmm. and, you know, you've got all this anxiety, you can't sleep. The last thing you want to do is have sex, yeah. really. You yeah. know? So you've got to work on all that other stuff yes. to um, help bring your libido back. But it is also a hormonal issue as well yes. as, you know, as how you're feeling more generally. Yeah, yeah. So the other thing that lots of women say to me, and somebody made me laugh so much, and she said, now I know why when you hit 50, you have to wear a tunic dress. <laughs> <laughs> because you get bloated and you and a lot of women gain weight around their bellies mm. and I definitely you know I've, I've always been pretty slim and I've said this in my sort of lives sometimes that I never had to think about my belly until recently and I'm like suddenly I'm having to work really hard to sort of you know keep it how how I want it to look and it's not you know, we all come in different shapes and sizes. I'm quite curvy, you know, and, but if, if you've been used to being really slim your whole life and suddenly you've got this weight around your middle to some women, it makes them feel really unsexy and mm. they do everything they can to try and get rid of it. So, so what, what do you think about bloating and kind of belly fat coming into the sort of pre-menopause um, and the menopause or perimenopause, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think they're, they're sort of two separate issues. Um, I think you do, you can get some strange and unusual digestive disturbances happening around the perimenopause and the menopause. I mean, you get, there are so many weird, weird and wonderful symptoms that crop up around this time. Um, so I think paying attention to your gut health is, is really important, you know, perhaps you know, take some probiotics, um, you know, as, as we've talked about previously, um, you know, make sure you're eating a really healthy diet and looking after your liver. Um, but in terms of the weight gain, I mean, that definitely does have a hormonal comp component. But as we've spoken about, you know, the, the effects of stress and cortisol dysregulation uh, really make you pile on the pounds mm -hmm. and i think um you know it's so interesting around this time of life because you know in our heads we all think we're still 25 right of you course. know and <laughs> <laughs> we are aren't we <laughs> yeah yeah and so you know we keep um pushing ourselves and we keep thinking that we're going to bounce back like we did when we were 25 yeah and that we can burn the candle at both ends um, we can work really hard. We can work, you know, hours and hours and hours, work all the weekends, you know, do all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but we just can't, you know, because we've got to start looking after ourselves, yeah. you know, and we've just got to have that little shift yeah. in our mentality that we've got to look after ourselves a bit more. Yeah. And um, I don't know what you think, Denise, but, um, uh, you know, this, this long term cortisol imbalance mm -hmm. uh, does lead to weight gain mm -hmm. and getting the effects of the long-term stress under control, reducing inflammation in your system yeah. and obviously doing exercise and not eating so much sugar and, yeah. you know, um, 
calming the stress response, doing yoga, sleeping well, you yeah. know, all, it's all part of that big picture and that will help you lose the weight. Yes. Yeah. And one of the things that I have found that's been, that was really effective for me, and I'd love your opinion on it. Um, Cause I know certainly in some cultures, raw food eating isn't necessarily classed as the best because it can be quite cooling on the body, but when it's hotter. So I did a month, um, in March where I did a raw food month and I really felt amazing. And I, I really felt my hormones were really in control. I lost the kind of belly fat. I just felt like I'd got myself really back in check, but that might just be my body type and mm. that might not suit everyone. So what's yeah. your opinion on raw eating? Um, I, yeah, I mean, there's, I know that in, uh, Ch I'm not a Chinese herbalist, I'm a Western herb herbalist, but I know in Chinese um, herbal medicine that, um, you know, raw food is, is seen as very, very cold, uh, yeah. up, you know, on the body. Um, but, you know, menopause is a very hot heat heating condition. Yeah. So um, I know that obviously you know, things like celery juice are very, very popular at the moment. And, you know, all those things that are very high in nutrient um, value, um, you know, are all very beneficial for us. So I think, it, again, as you said, it comes back to, you know, is it suited to the individual and the individual picture of that person? Yeah. Um, you know, because for some people, they'll find it just a bit challenging to go on a raw food diet, won't yeah. they? you know, and I think sort of maybe gently, you know, this is what so I find so fascinating and exciting about this time of life is just watching people start to make small changes to their yeah. diet and their lifestyle and their habits. Yes. And slowly they start turning the oil tanker around, Yeah. you yeah. know, and then they, they're set then and they're on that path, that healthy path for life. Yeah. And it can happen, you know, I've had, so many women come and, you know, sit in my consultation room and just yes. say, oh, I'm never going to give up sugar and I'm, I'm never going to lose this weight. And, yeah. you know, I mean, that's just me. I'm never going to change. But yeah. they do, yes. you know, and it's yeah. so exciting when they do. So when it comes to herbs, is there yeah. anything particular that you might recommend to help somebody who's got bloating or, you know, just wants a little um, help with kind of losing that weight, is there anything that you would suggest to your clients? Or is it more about, as you were saying earlier, the gut health, the probiotics, you know, that kind of thing? Yeah, and also I think, um, you know, just keep, I keep going on about this whole cortisol thing. And in the last episode, we talked about adaptogens and um, just bringing this whole uh, cortisol feedback loop in the body back under control yeah. you can use adaptogens to help you do that so yeah. things like ashwagandha and rhodiola um, and licorice root um, and when you get that stress response back under control because what's happening with all of that is when you're in fight or flight mode all the time and you're just super stressed and running on adrenaline yes. what's going on in your body is mm. that your um, hormones are communicating with your liver and telling your liver to release more glucose into your system yeah. because you need energy yeah. to, um, you know, to deal with all the stressful situations that you're in, yeah. but actually you're not using that glucose. You're not using that energy, especially if you're sitting at a desk all day and you're getting very stressful yes. work things going on, yes. you know, and it's just, the sugar's not going go somewhere. Anywhere. It? Yeah, it's, it's not going somewhere. anywhere. So yeah. it's just piling on, you know. Yeah. So you know, you've got to get this whole stress response system under control yeah. and do exercise and eat well. Yeah, and I yeah. think that's really true because um, often, as you know, but I think as well when I say that, it's hard to sort of make that judgment because a lot of people say I'm working out so much you know, I'm, I'm eating really well and the weight is still there. But then I think that's when you come to the stress hormones and you've got to look at your lifestyle. If you picked every client apart, which yeah. you and I would do, then you would pinpoint, you know, where their levels of stress are and how you, you know, sort of work that out, which is why you said, I think earlier about, you know, introducing things like yoga and I, I'm mm. a massive fan of acupuncture, yes. um, even yeah, cranial osteopath. Yes. 
people always assume that an osteopath treatment is about the back. I send so many people to osteopath and they say, Denise, what am I even going to say to them? I don't have a bad back. Cranial osteopath has really helped so many of my clients because it calms the nervous system. Just, you know, if you don't know about it, it's just literally slight manipulation on the skull and then on the body, which can really lower your cortisol levels because sometimes we're in such a sort of cycle of stress that it's hard to calm it down on your own unless you're walking on grass every day, doing yoga, <laughs> doing meditation, doing, you yeah. know. And yes, acupuncture just... is really useful, yeah. you know, as well as cranial osteopathy. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely. So just, you know, as, sorry, I was just going to say um, with the uh, this whole stress thing, because um, I think people have very different ideas of what stress is. Because you can say to people, um, you know, you can start explaining to them about stress and they'll say, oh, but I'm not stressed. I really love my job, you know, and I love, I love everything that I'm doing. I'm, yeah. You know, I do, it's not causing me stress. Yeah. But actually, that's a, different, that's a different thing. Like when you're sitting at your desk for long hours, yeah. you know, and you're working on the weekends and you're working late at night, you might love it. Yeah. Or you might be flying around the world all the time. Well, yeah. in the old days, yeah. you know. <laughs> But, you know, they might, you know, they might be loving it. But what you're doing is you're putting your body under all this pressure, all this stress. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think, as you say, it's just sometimes even admitting it. Is, yeah. You know, because I might see on the testing machine when I've tested somebody and I'll say something to them and they'll be like, no. But then as you talk to them <laughs> and then suddenly they realize, yeah, actually, yes, that is me. And you know, this is my life. And it's just that sort of admitting that you need to make change. And that's not easy. Yeah. You know, because we all like, you know, we're creatures of habit, aren't we? Lots yeah. of us where we like our lives to kind of go along the same. But, you know, if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to get the same result. And that's, you know, that's why change is, is good. Yeah, 50 years of habits by I the time know. you get to the menopause. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, phytoestrogens, what are they and are they useful? Yeah, so people get very confused about phytoestrogens. And, um, you know, there's various forms of phytoestrogens. I mean, the main sort of famous ones, obviously, are soy products, um, red clover, um, but also flaxseed is a, is a phytoestrogen and a very, very useful one in our diet. It's also very high in omega-3. Yeah. Um, and phytoestrogens are really interesting because they, um, they weakly bind to our estrogen receptors in our body. And as we've talked about in, I think, episode one, you know, we have estrogen receptors all over our body, you know, not just in our reproductive system, which is why estrogen is so important. And so um, phytoestrogens, phytoestrogens aren't as strong as hormonal estrogen, but what they do is if you've got a low estrogen situation, so say if you're through the menopause, um, you'll some of those estrogen receptors will be sitting empty in your body because there's not enough estrogen to go around. Yeah. So the phytoestrogens will get in there and bind to those receptors. And so they can just gently help boost the levels of estrogen in your body. But really interestingly, they can also do the opposite. They're kind of amazing in that way. So if you've got too much estrogen, so say in perimenopause, you might yes. be having big estrogen surges. What the phytoestrogens will do is they'll compete for the estrogen receptors. Mm. So they'll sort of fight with your, um, your hormonal estrogen and they will bind to the receptors and because they're a little bit weaker they'll start reducing the levels of estrogen and balance mm. them out a bit more so, so they whatever are, you need it will yeah balance you either way exactly so they are really really useful um there's been some really interesting studies though that um show that um because soy we, we sometimes see sold in the shops um, isoflavones, yeah. which is a um, constituent of soy. And, so, you know, that's been extracted and then it's being sold, you know, just on its own, the isoflavone constituent. Yeah. Um, and um, that's, um, that's very useful. But there's lots of interesting studies that show 
but it very much depends on your gut health as to how effective it's going to be. So in lots of trials, they actually give people a probiotic to take mm -hmm. at the same time as the isoflavones okay. because it, it, it just helps, you know, yes. it enhances Your the whole thing, which doesn't surprise us, does it, Denise? Yes. Well, yeah. And this is, this is the thing I always try and, you know, you've said it a few times through these podcasts, but your gut health is so crucial mm -hmm. um, because that's your, you know, that's your absorption. And, you know, you could be eating the best diet in the world, you know, but if you're super stressed and your gut's not working properly or, you, you know, you've got an overgrowth of bacteria or whatever, you're, you're not going to get the results that you're looking for or the energy, you know, or the skin tone or, any, you know, it just affects everything. Um, so getting your gut health right, first of all, is so important. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. And just just with the phytoestrogens as yeah. well, because, um, you know, people get a little bit scared about them if they've had breast cancer yeah. or they've had sort of um, high estrogen um, uh, ailments. Yes. Um, and, you know, I think the research is a little bit mixed on that front. Some studies show that uh, soy and red clover can be actually really protective against breast cancer. Yeah. But I think if you've got if you've had a hormone sensitive breast cancer or any form of cancer, you know, it's, it is best to be a little bit wary of the phytoestrogens because yes. you don't want anything sort of yeah. tickling your hormones when they shouldn't be. Yeah. And soya was so promoted, wasn't it? 20 years ago as the thing that everybody should have and everybody was having soya milk and, you know, yeah. soya beans and everything. But then suddenly it kind of did a bit of a turnaround, didn't it? Saying, in the media, no, you shouldn't have this. So, so where do you sit with, with soya? Well, it's really interesting because um, I actually don't really use a lot of, um, of these phytoestrogens like soy and red clover, yeah. um, you know, in my practice because I kind of come at menopause from a, a bit of a different angle. Yes. But you know what they're really, really great for, and I think we're going to talk about this in a minute, is um, bone health. Ah, uh, okay. So, because, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I've got to go on HRT because it's going to protect me from osteoporosis. Yes. And that is true. HRT is great for, for protecting you from bone fracture and, and improving bone density. But there's so much else you can do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and isoflavones are, are something that, it, that is really beneficial to take yes. when you're in your sort of 50s and beyond. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so going back to the sort of perimenopausal symptoms, yes, I have had so many clients um, that suffer from really heavy bleeding. Oh yeah, and and that can be so draining, um, you know. And and then they almost get scared to kind of go somewhere, and it's just you know sort of prolonging this kind of feeling of I'm not myself anymore because they're really bleeding, you know, outside of pads or, you know, a tampon oh, it's or awful. and it's awful. So, so what would you recommend that somebody in that situation can do? So, um, yeah, it's awful. I've had so many people describe it as, you know, you're basically dealing with a crime scene, you know, yeah. every month. Well, you know, and also in perimenopause, this can start happening to you every two weeks, yeah. you know, because yeah. your cycle's all over the place. So, yeah. you know, oh my God, and it's so tiring and you lose so much blood and you can become really anemic. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's a lot of work we can do around this. And, you know, as I've touched on before, um, the liver is so key in reducing the high estrogen levels and taking things like milk thistle and dandelion root, you know, really yeah. help with that. Yeah. But do you know what? There is a, an amazing herb that it just is incredible for heavy bleeding. Okay. And it's called Shepherd's Purse. Okay. And it grows wild all over the place. Have you ever seen I've it? I've heard, you ever heard of, it. of it. Yeah. I wouldn't know what it looked like to yeah. see it, but I yeah. have heard of it. Yeah. So it's really, it's a very cute little plant and it's got these little heart shaped seed pods that I suppose in, you know, 200 years ago looked like a shepherd's purse. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's incredibly astringent and, um, you can just take a few drops of it as a tincture okay. um, or you can drink it as a tea um, when you start getting your period and you start the heavy bleeding. 
um, you know, and if you're having it as a tea, you know, drink it continuously, yes. drink a lot of it. Yeah. But if you, if you're having it as a tincture, you just need sort of a few drops of it, you know, about three or four times a day. Okay. Um, and it really does stop heavy, heavy wow. bleeding. And I've, you know, I've actually been working with some midwives recently oh, really? and they have been using it, um, to stop hemorrhaging in women who've just given birth wow. and it, and it works. Oh, that's you know. amazing. I mean, it, yeah, it's really, it's a really helpful herb. So would it work in the way that it stops that particular period from being so heavy? So the following month, you just use it again in the same way if the period becomes heavy. You don't use it continuously or how would you use it? Yeah, so just you just need it for the, the duration of your period. Okay. Um, so it's, it's, it's obviously kind of an acute medicine. It's, yes. it's you know, like a first aid situation where yes. you're... Um, you're treating the symptom yes but then meanwhile you can do a lot of work on the underlying cause which is the hormone imbalance and the high estrogen levels and the liver work yes. Yes. so there's you know there's a lot going on with the heavy bleeding yeah. but that's just a really good kind of quick fix in a way yeah and yeah. talking of quick fixes um so we you did touch on some amazing herbs in the last episode but brain fog, people feeling like they can't think straight. You know, I have clients saying to me, they're really scared. They say, you know, do I have dementia? Do I have yeah. Alzheimer's? You know, yeah. they just, they feel that forgetful that mid sentence, they won't know what they're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and these are all very common symptoms. Yeah. So, so what would somebody do about that? Yeah. It's awful. You know, because people can be just in the middle of a meeting and then just, yeah. Um, I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, obviously we want to work on the overall picture of hormone balance um, uh, and, you know, stress reduction. But some really good herbs for brain fog are ginkgo. Yes. Uh, and there's another really good one, which is called Go-To Cola. Um, uh, so g-o-t-u and then k-o-l-a go yeah. to cola yeah. um and they um they really do help improve cognitive function right. um mental focus but actually we talked before about an adaptogen called rhodiola yes and that can also just help to kind of boost your memory boost your energy levels and it's just an all round you know useful herb in, yeah. in menopause as well yeah. so yeah you, you know there's I always put in a little bit of go-to cola or maybe a bit of ginkgo if um, someone, you know, can't focus. And, yeah. You know, I get really good results with it. Yeah, that's fantastic. So um, what about erratic menstrual cycles as well? Because that's not necessarily heavy bleeding, but if you're going on ho well, a holiday, if we could, <laughs> um, you know, but if you've got a function coming up and you just think, I have no idea where my period is going to be, what do I do? Is, are there herbs that can help to rebalance your monthly cycle? Yeah. So um, in perimenopause, you know, this is a very common situation that, you know, your periods just really go completely out of whack. Yeah. And something that's very useful to take um, is a herb, which I'm sure lots of people will have heard of, um, which is called Agnus castus. Oh, yeah. um, it's also called chase tree berry. Um, and it's also called Vitex, sometimes Vitex Agnus Castus. Yeah. And um, you only need a pretty small amount of it, you know, perhaps around, you know, eight drops of the tincture every yeah. day. Um, I think you can buy it as a supplement as well. Yeah. And it does take a few cycles for things to start calming down and regulating again. Uh, but, you, you know, I've seen really good results with it where, you know, um, women who've been having periods like every two weeks, you know, it will put them back to where they were sort yeah. of, you know, once a month. Yeah. You know, yes. which is a huge relief, you know. <laughs> and, and what about the other way around as well? So say that you're having, you know, somebody who's having a period every three months or every four yeah. months, does it help to regulate it back to every month so that you feel better? It can do. It can do. Um, you know, I've had clients who've gone into early menopause, like, you know, sort of around age 41 where they've stopped okay. all periods. Yeah. And, um, and it's really helped to bring their cycle back as part yeah. of a bigger picture. Yeah. But um, when you're at the other end and you're sort of heading towards 50, 
you know, that it, it, if, if you've still got the ovarian reserve, then yeah. it can help bring the cycles back to a monthly cycle. Yeah. But if you're really, you know, if you're heading into the natural phasing out of your cycle, yeah. then you're going to start getting those really big gaps, you know, of sort of three months, four months, five yeah. months, yeah. you know, has it gone? Yeah. Have I stopped, you know, yeah. So, and you, you know, do hear of people that yeah. don't you that they ha they're having that experience and then they get pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. they think yeah. they're really safe and all of a sudden they're like, <sighs> you know, yeah. so just to warn people, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's all stopped, does it? <laughs> no. No, definitely not. <laughs> I've had a few clients who've had those little surprises. Yeah. <laughs> um, so also you touched earlier just very quickly on bone health. Mm. So how can you support bone health if you're not taking something like HRT? So um, as I've mentioned, you know, isoflavones um, are, are, are really useful. Um, if, you know, just make sure, just see how you, you know, do, do your research if you've, if you've got, if you've had breast cancer or have a history of it in the family. Um, black cohosh um, is very useful, um, but also, um, uh, weight bearing exercise you know you can either do weights or you know don't forget that yoga is actually a weight bearing exercise yeah. you know doing your planking is yeah. you know weight bearing exercise yeah. um, but also you know make sure you're taking your vitamin d very important for bone health you know magnesium calcium um, you know reduce your red meat intake because the um, the acidic content in the uh, the red meat can actually deplete um, the minerals in your bones. And as we've been talking about so much in this podcast, gut health is so important for bone density yeah. because you need to be absorbing the nutrients from your food so that you can have healthy bones. Yeah. Um, but you must have some other uh, thoughts on this too, Denise. Yeah. I mean, this it sounds always really quite mad and people sometimes look at you like you're crazy, but dairy can also cause quite a lot of acidity in the blood um so i would actually remove dairy from somebody's diet and add in a whole heap of calcium rich foods mm -hmm. and you know so as i talked about earlier and these are all the anti-inflammatory foods so your dark green leafy vegetables lots of spinach broccoli kale um chard swiss chard asparagus you know there's just there's so many things you know you think about a gorilla and i always talk about this because and i've done a lot of talks in osteoporosis societies and everywhere they've got you know make sure you're having your dairy eat this amount of cheese and it's really hard for people to get their heads around because we've been so conditioned to think that that's the best and only way to get our calcium but if you think about you know a gorilla a gorilla doesn't sit there drinking a pint of milk a gorilla will sit and eat the grass and the greens you know and the gorilla is big and strong and robust and it's just knowing that if you're having your greens you know either in a smoothie or just having you know lots of salad or you know sort of green foods with your vegetables with your meals you will absorb that calcium and the minerals that you need and that's so important for people to know but that's why i'm a big fan of say the green smoothie because it's just a really good way of people getting that larger amount of minerals into their system you know first thing in the morning you know, and then focusing on it with each meal as the day goes on. And you'll feel better anyway if you're eating like that because that's going to give you energy, but it's the clear energy. That also helps to boost your gut health. So, you know, the more fiber you can have, um, it produces, you know, having raw foods produces more enzymes in the gut. So, you know, all of these things help to improve the gut and the liver, which is everything you've been talking about in how to improve your hormones. So my last and final question, it, it's sort of a question and an opinion in the same hit. I truly believe, and I've seen it with many of my clients, that you can, you know, get your way through perimenopausal and menopausal symptoms with the right food, the right lifestyle, the correct, you know, diet plan and herbs. Do you think and have you seen, you know, with your clients that, they, that this is possible Absolutely. You know, and I think there's a real myth going around that um, herbs will only help you if you've got quite um, mild symptoms, you know, and, and same with dietary changes. Oh, but, you know, if you've got really severe symptoms, you've got to go on HRT. And that's just not true. You know, I've had women 
come to me who have been signed off work, unable to function, you know, crying all day, can't get out of bed, high anxiety, brain fog, body pain. You know, they've been a complete write off, you know, and we've managed to, you know, and, and not, it didn't take too much time at all to get them back on their feet. Um, you know, and obviously it takes a little bit of commitment on their part as well. Mm. You know, this is, but you know, that's what I love about this is, is it's giving women some power yeah. to make changes in their own life and um, look after themselves so much better. Yeah. So, you know, you, you, you can do so much, you know, and, um, you know, there will be some some stubborn you know tough cases out there yeah. um you know and i'm you know i absolutely do not judge anyone who goes and wants to take hrt you know everyone is different and everyone has their own individual situation um, you know, and I work alongside a lot of women who are on HRT, but they want to look at all the other stuff that's going on with their health and their lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and then I help them come off the HRT, you know, because you can't stay on it forever. That's yeah. the other thing. Yeah. Um, so, yes, absolutely. There is so much you can do, you know, and, and you should be doing it at this time of your life. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and if you're a younger woman listening to this, you know, maybe you're in your 30s. Um, you know, start now, you know, preventative, yeah. take preventative action and then yeah. you'll be in a much better place when you get there. Yeah. So if you're kind of doing lots of those useful things earlier on, then as you're coming into the perimenopause, you're just going to slide into it rather than jumping off that cliff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. No one wants to jump off the cliff. And, you know, and I, th I think it's a shame because because a lot of this stuff has all been swept under the carpet for too long. Yeah. You know, women just haven't had a clue what's, what's going on, what's happened to me, you know, when they, when they hit this place. Yes. So the more we can educate people, you know, the better. Yeah. And, um, you know, just, just of all the things they can do to look after themselves. And there's also that sort of other side of it as well, which is going to definitely have to be more episodes with you, Melinda, because I absolutely love this conversation, <laughs> but, you know, coming out of, menopause and then sort of going into your later years and how to look after yourself then with herbs and keep vibrant and you know feel young and just look after your body your muscles your bones all of that kind of stuff because the more supple you remain and the more you can do the younger you will feel and then going right back to your sort of teens and 20s that's another whole subject that we could cover because you know I know so many people that suffer from really bad menstrual cramps Mm. their periods are irregular you know all those kind of things so I think those are two other ends of the scale that we could definitely cover in other podcast series <laughs> but I have learned so much you are so knowledgeable Melinda honestly <laughs> thanks it's, for having me amazing. and I really hope that you know we've been able to give people some hope some really clear information about the herbs that can help and obviously you are contactable Melinda if they want to get in touch with you all of the details will be um you know with this podcast and thank you so much for your incredible knowledge and your information I think everybody will be very appreciative of this oh well thanks for having me Denise I've really enjoyed um chatting to you and also I've learned lots from you as well oh it's been wonderful and I hope to chat with you again soon Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.